Today, we are going to be taking a closer look at the upcoming changes for patch 12.11. Hey guys, welcome to the Inside Gaming YouTube channel. My name is Olo Brolo, and if you'd like to see more of our informative content, please consider subscribing to our channel as we're going to bring a lot more of it very soon. To start off, we've got some more news about the upcoming factory expansion, which is of course confirmed for the next patch. One of these news is that the Skavvos Kulvada will be carrying a Saiga 12 with a drum mag, and he will also of course be having a sledgehammer. The sledgehammer you won't actually be able to loot, at least for now. Nikita has said that maybe in the future they will make it a lootable item if they decide to add melee weapons as a equipable weapon. They've also said that they're not quite sure yet if he's going to have his own guards, but they do know that he will have his own special animations and that he might have a lower spawn chance than other scav bosses that we currently have. Furthermore, we've also learned that on Factory, with the expansion, they're going to add at least one more player spawn so that the map will still have enough players. It's also been confirmed that there will be multiple new guns coming, but we won't get any new calibers. So we can be excited for that. But sadly, they've also confirmed that there won't be any revolvers coming in the next patch, which we've all been kind of waiting for for a long time. But they have said that they are, might be coming in 12.12 or later. We'll just have to see. Another long-awaited feature coming to Escape from Tarkov in the patch 12.11 is the so-called Scav Karma. Now, this will be a rating assigned to your Scav based on your Scav playstyle. So if you behave badly as a scav, killing other scavs and scav players, your rating will go down, resulting in worse gear for your scavs and also the AI will get more hostile towards your scav, meaning that they will start shooting you at some point. This will also affect scav bosses. So now at the moment, scav bosses will always shoot you if you're a scav player, but in the future with the scav karma, you will be able to run along with scav bosses without them shooting you if your scav karma is good enough. Now, having this good scav karma also comes with other benefits. Of course, your gear will be better, but another main benefit is that there will be a rating for fence, a loyalty rating. Now, this loyalty rating will go up if you behave well as a scav. This means that if your rating is good enough and you level up your loyalty level with fence, you will be able to actually buy gear that players have lost in random raids that they didn't insure, meaning guns, everything basically, that they haven't insured and they lost. You'll be able to buy it through fence if your rating is good enough. Now, to me personally, this sounds like a really good change as it has always been difficult to play as a scav player because other scav players would just randomly kill you. And I really hope that this is going to add a lot more player interaction between scav players, which to me sounds like a really fun activity. Another new gun related feature coming in the patch will be malfunctions. Now for now, these will be limited to misfires. These will also be connected to your gun's durability, meaning that if you loot a broken gun, let's say it's been shot a lot, it will lose durability as it does right now. But now this will mean that the gun will have a much higher chance to malfunction or in this case misfire. You will then have to clear said misfire and the higher your skill with said weapon, meaning your weapon mastering, the quicker it will be to clear the malfunction or the misfire. Something that the community has not been as excited about are the grenade launchers and there will be another one coming to the game called the GP30 grenade launcher. It's an AK underbarrel grenade launcher but it will not be implemented with this patch. They've said that it is completely finished and they could implement it but they're waiting for new mechanics to come into the game before they do which should please a lot of people. Something else that they've been working on are weapon sites. They will be reworked for this patch, meaning that the glass or the reticles will be different, at least for some sites. We don't actually know what this will change or how this exactly will work, but it will definitely be changed and we'll have to look and see how it plays out. They also said that they've been working on the eye box of the sites, but of course we don't really know how this will turn out. The announced inertia mechanic is not going to be implemented with this patch, but they've been working on it and it will definitely be on the ETS test servers after 12.11 has been released together with the Unity 2019 
engine, which sounds really cool. And I'm really hoping that this will bring some great new features to Escape from Tarkov and fix a lot of problems as the Unity engine and the inertia mechanic will bring some huge gameplay changes and we'll just have to see. I think this will be great for the game and let's be excited about that guys. Now another great thing coming to the game in 12.11 is an interchange rework. It's not a quite big rework but it will change the shadows meaning that people will have a much harder time hiding in some store corners and camping. Personally love to see this change as I've really not been enjoying interchange that much as it's been a really campy map and it's just not been that much fun to me personally. Another thing that BSG has been working on constantly is the netcode. In my opinion, it's already improved a lot since I've started playing the game, but they're still working on it. They've been changing the servers weekly. They've, that's what Nikita said. They've been trying very hard to fix these issues. Nikita's also admitted that they've got some problems with their internal BSG network engine that they've been working on. But another problem they have is the Unity engine itself. And we can hope that the Unity 2019 engine will fix some of these problems. Pestili then also pitched an interesting idea to Nikita during the stream, saying that he would love to see a special server that you can select through the launcher, which does not have a ping limit, meaning that you would be able to play with your friends from all around the world. For example, if you're from Europe, you currently can't really play with people from Australia and New Zealand for example as your ping would be way too high and you would just keep getting kicked. In my opinion this sounds like an amazing change because I've got some people living in Australia, some friends of mine that I can't play with at all and this would be great. I mean it would be a terrible ping of course for everyone playing on it but it would mean that it's at least possible. Nikita responded to this quite positively. He said, of course, there's some issues of it if people accidentally choose the server and then complain about having a bad ping. To me, it sounded like he was quite happy with it and he was definitely going to talk about it with the dev team, which sounds good. A completely new feature coming to Escape from Tarkov is NVIDIA DLSS resampling. It might be coming with this patch. Nikita said it's probably going to be coming, but we don't really know if it's actually going to come with this patch but if it doesn't it will come with 12.12 .12. what is resampling or dlss it means that the game is actually being rendered at a lower resolution and is then upscaled by your graphics card to look better this means you will have much higher frame rates for example right now if you go into the game and maybe change your resolution down from what you currently have to maybe something like 720p or even 480p you will see your performance goes up amazingly but of course the game will look like crap. DLSS is an NVIDIA feature for RTX graphics cards so for the two newest generations of NVIDIA graphics cards which will then upscale said resolution and make the game still look really good while also having that really improved frame rate. This should be a great change because a lot of people still have FPS problems with Escape from Tarkov of course, the big problem with this is that a lot of people can't buy graphics cards right now as they're all out of stock and really expensive, but at least for the people with the newer graphics cards, this should mean a much better performance in the game. They also teased that there will be more NVIDIA features coming in the future, which does sound like they might be implementing RTX features into Escape from Tarkov, but of course we don't really know anything about that yet, so we'll just have to stay tuned. Now, 12.11 will also be bringing some new streamer items from your guys' favorite streamers, meaning that there will be a new streamer item for Aqua FPS, General Sam, Willa Z, and Evasion. Something that I'm personally really excited about is the upcoming late wipe event called Free Labs. This will mean that you will be able to go on labs without a keycard, without any problems. Everyone will be able to play it, meaning that if you've never been able to play it because you didn't have the money, or you just thought it would be too expensive, or there would be too many geared people, you can now play it for free when the event starts. The event will be starting in the upcoming weeks, it might be the end of May, maybe even the beginning of June, but it will definitely be coming, it is confirmed, and I'm really excited for it, as to me personally, this seems like a great event, and these late wipe events are always really fun. Now, Nikita said that these events have really been made a lot easier by the Twitch Rivals events and things like that, as the Tarkov development team has learned a lot about implementing events onto the servers from these Twitch Rivals events. To me, that sounds like they're planning on doing a lot more of these in the future and Nikita also asked the community for some ideas for upcoming events. 
Now about these future events, Pastilli and Nikita actually talked about doing some special hardcore event on the ETS testing server, which you can select in the Escape from Tarkov launcher. You will have to go into your launcher and ask or apply for test servers. Now, once you've applied, you might be accepted, you might be rejected, you never know. But I would recommend you guys go into your Escape from Tarkov launcher and simply apply to the ETS program. These events have not been confirmed. They might be coming, they might not be. Pastilli sounds like he really would like to do this. Do some special hardcore event on the ETS servers for the real hardcore community. Something that we as a community have been really asking for for a long time is offline co-op. So Nikita said, that they are definitely going to implement this as a feature sometime in the future. He said it might be about a year, maybe even less than a year, but it will take some time. And he also said that it won't be that easy because they would have to assign a lot of service to these offline raids if you're going in as a duo. And he said they don't really have the capacity to do that yet. So it might be linked to some quests, some storyline stuff, it might be locked by quests, they don't know how they're going to be implemented, but they are definitely going to be implementing it. Now, something else that Nikita talked about a little bit was the arena. He once again stated that it will be a standalone game separate from Escape from Tarkov, and it won't be released with some Tarkov patch. It will be a completely separate thing. And he also said that it won't be coming in 2021, meaning that it will probably come in 2022 or maybe even in 2023, but it will definitely take some more time. So then we come to the new maps, Streets of Tarkov and Lighthouse. These maps won't be coming with 12.11, but Lighthouse will be coming before Streets of Tarkov and Lighthouse is said to be coming this summer, probably July. We don't quite know what that means yet, so I'm personally thinking that Lighthouse might be a wipe, meaning that this factory expansion could not be a wipe, but we don't know that yet. This is all unconfirmed. We just know that it is coming in the summer. Now, Streets of Tarkov has been pushed towards the end of this year. Nikita said that they definitely do want to release it in 2021, and it will probably have to be a partial release, meaning that only a part of the map of Streets of Tarkov will be released and he also said that it will still be a huge map, even if it's just a part of it. Another thing that won't be implemented with this patch and has been pushed to either 12.12 .12 or even beyond is VoIP. VoIP or voice communication will be pushed to 12.12 .12 or beyond. We don't know what that actually means, if it's really going to take a lot more time or well, let's hope it's coming very soon. Finally, I wanna thank you guys for watching through this video. If I missed anything from the stream, please let me know in the comments below. And if you guys want, we're live on Twitch right now. So join us if you have any more questions. I will, of course, answer them. Just leave them in the Twitch chat. And I hope to see you guys out there. Have a good one.